Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. My name is Vineet and in today's video, we'll see how to install or uninstall a program in Linux using package managers. Now in one of my previous videos, I've already shown how to install a program using a tape archive file or a tar file. That is the manual method of installing a program. Now in today's video, we'll see how to install or uninstall a program in Linux using package managers. That comes default in every distribution of Linux. All right. So with that said, let's begin today's video. Alright, so what is a package manager? Package manager is a tool and every Linux distro has a default package manager. Now it is used for installing, uninstalling, updating and many other related functions like searching for a particular program, checking the version of the program installed on your computer, etc. You can do that using the package manager. Now the real advantage of package manager is that if we install a program using the tar file, we have to make sure that the configuration are set and all the required dependencies are installed and up to date on the computer. Now, package manager does this for you automatically. So you do not have to worry about the configuration settings or the dependencies for installing a particular program. It does that automatically. All you have to do is give a single command and it will install the program on your computer. Now, some of the advantages of package manager is first advantage is you download a, uh, a program from the repositories of packages by provided by the OS project. Now, we know that Linux comes in very various different versions. For example, Kali, Ubuntu, Fedora, Cent OS. Now, these are various distributions of Linux and the package manager tool downloads a program from the repositories that is maintained by the OS project. So you know that they are the secure provider of your program. So that is another advantage. And the biggest advantage is it does the dependencies resolution by itself. So you do not have to worry about what are the dependencies uh, of installing a program and check that and update it or install it on your computer. It does that automatically. Another advantage is it has a common installation and configuration location. So if you would manually keep on installing uh, softwares from tar files, now you are not sure where your programs are located because every time you do it you might be installing in some different places and it standardizes the format of your downloaded program so these are the advantages of package manager now first up let's see the package managers that comes default in debian and ubuntu systems now the backend tool for these systems are dpackage. Frontend is the apt package management system. Now the GUI for apt is aptitude, which is the graphical user interface uh, program. So backend on which the apt work is dpackage. All right, let's see the apt package first. At apt stands for advanced packaging tool. Now you can install a program using the apt package manager by typing in apt get install and then the package name. For uninstalling, you can do apt get remove and then give the package name. For removing downloaded package files, all right, just the downloaded package files, you can do apt get clean. For removing the downloaded package files, uninstalling the program and uninstalling the configuration files associated with that program, you have the purge command. So purge command is very important if you want to get rid of the uh, application completely from your computer you can type in apt get purge and then give the package name so that will what it will do is it will uninstall the program it will remove the downloaded package files and it will remove the remove any configurations files that are there on your computer related to that program all right so for updating all the softwares on your computer you can do apt get update and that will update all the uh, softwares or programs that are currently installed on your computer. Next is the apt cache command. This is again a very powerful command to search a package name uh, present in the OS project repos. You can type in apt cache search and then give the package name. It will search the repositories that are maintained by the OS project. Another command is apt cache show package name. It will show the detailed information about that 
program then if you want to see if a program is installed on your computer or not you can do apt cache policy and then give the program name it will show you if that particular program is installed on your computer or not very very important and at last if you want to see all the programs that are installed on your computer you can do apt cache package names pkg names you can type that in and that will show list of programs that are currently installed on your computer all right and next is the aptitude which is the gui version of apt now i'm not going to go in to the aptitude package manager but you can check that by yourself because it is pretty self explanatory and it is gui based now this is very very important now when we say that apt get install will check your repositories now where all your repositories are stored is in this file it's under etc apt sources dot list this file contains list of all the repositories from which apt construct its database now whenever you do apt get search or apt get install now it checks the repositories that are present in sources dot list file and if the program is available in that repository it will download it and install it on your computer all right the format of sources dot list is deb and a space and then it gives the location of the resource for example you have http kali.org for kali linux and then the distribution uh, we have kali and then it has the components for example uh, main non free contrib this gives you the level of support that are available by the developers of this os project all right now in ubuntu the distribution may contain code name like lenny squeezy sid or hch which stands for current stable lenny stands for current stable squeezy for testing sid for unstable and hch for old stable all right that is also very important at last let's talk about a dpackage tool which is really the back end of apt package management system tool you can also install a program using dpackage you can type in dpackage dash i and then give a package name dot deb file so that will install the program in your debian uh, linux version to list all the packages currently installed on your computer you can do d package space dash dash list that will show you all the programs that are currently installed in the computer now that is about the debian and ubuntu systems now let's go ahead and see package managers that comes with fedora or cent os system as you are aware these are the distribution uh, maintained by red hat now the back end tool for these distribution rpm stands for uh, red hat package manager and the front end is the yum package manager tool all right so let's see the front end first yum stands for yellow dog updater modifier now to install a program using a yum you can type in yum install and then give the package name for uninstalling you can do yum erase and package name for updating yum update will update all the program currently installed on your computer to search if a package exist in the os repositories or not you can type in yum search and give the search pattern and that will see if that package is available or not the repository for yum is in the hcyum.conf all right and the format is also little different than the format we spoke about uh, in case of the debian or ubuntu system and the back end manager as i told you is the red hat package manager or rpm you can install a program using rpm also you can type in rpm dash i give a package name dot rpm file and for erasing you can do rpm give a space dash dash erase and give a package name now our, one important thing to note is rpm does not do dependencies re resolution by itself so you do you do have to take care of that also so that was all about the package managers in theory now let's go to a live linux distribution and try installing and uninstalling a program using package managers all right so here i am in a ubuntu machine so what we'll do now is as you can see i have a firefox browser installed on my computer let me open it up for you so there you go so what we'll do is we'll try to uninstall for firefox browser from the computer and then install google chrome browser using the package managers so in ubuntu the default package manager is the apt or advanced packaging tool so first up to find a, a package is installed on your computer you can type in apt cache and give a space and then type in policy and then type in the name of the i'm sorry policy and then type in the name of the program so firefox now as you can see it says that the firefox is installed and the build version is 228.0 now to remove firefox using the app tool type in apt dash get and then you can either you use remove that will remove mozilla firefox from your computer uh, you can 
also use purge command which will not only remove the Firefox browser but also remove any configuration files related to it alright so I'm gonna do purge and then type in Firefox and press enter alright it requires your root permission so just type in sudo and enter the root password and press enter alright so now it has start started uninstalling a program it says that 66 MB disk space will be free do you want to continue I'll press yes and press enter now while it's uninstalling let me open up another terminal now to get a list of programs that are installed on your computer type in apt cache pkg names and press enter this will give you the list of the entire programs that are currently installed on your computer now if you type pipe it through less then you can check that one line at a time or one page at a time by pressing the space bar so now you can see that the Firefox browser has been uninstalled and there's no icon right here on the taskbar to verify that you can type in apt cache policy and type in Firefox now it says installed is none so we have successfully uninstalled the program using the apt command now to install Chrome browser first you can either type in apt get install Chrome but it says permission denied sorry type in sudo and now it says that it is unable to locate package Chrome now this may happen because you need to type in the exact name of the program that you want to install now it may be possible that the repos do not have the installer package named as Chrome alright so to find out the exact package name you can search that out you can type in apt cache search and type Chrome this will search the repos and find out any program that has the Chrome now you can see the name is Chromium browser so you can copy this and then you can type in sudo apt get install and give the chromium browser name and press enter now as you can see it says after this operation 210 MB of additional disk space will be used Do you want to continue we will press yes and press enter Now as you can imagine 210 MB it will take some time to download so I'm gonna pause this video and I'm gonna come back once the installation has been finished now as you can see it has finished installing chromium browser you can check if the chromium browser has been installed by typing in apt cache policy and type in chromium dash browser press enter it says it has been installed now you can we can just ch search that out also by clicking on here type in chrome and as you can see we have the chromium browser here I can just open that up for you now as you can see the chrome browser has been successfully installed now this is how you can install or uninstall a software from your computer using the default package manager now I'm not going to go ahead and do the same for the yum and rpm package manager for Fedora and CentOS but the same holds true for them also you can try that out for yourself all right so that is all for today thank you guys for watching this video if you like this video kindly press the like button if you have any comment or suggestion please type that in in the comment box uh, thank you again and I'll see you next time